Start watching. Hey everyone, this is Chetna and you're watching Chet Chat, the largest online career and education talk show. And this is Chet Chat's masterclass on a perfect timetable or routine for you to follow 30, 45 or even 60 days before an important exam. But before we get to the timetable, press that subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get your notifications every time we go online and also give us a thumbs up if you like our work. So if you've got board exams or any other final exams coming up and you're worrying right now, don't worry, watch right till the end and you're going to be a super performer because this timetable is packed with everything including exercise, healthy eating, a good night's sleep, a midday nap, time to connect with friends and even to chill out. But before we talk about the timetable, I'm going to answer three very important questions that you might have. Question number one, what do I study? I have a limited time available. How do I decide what I should be studying? Now, I have two things to say to you on this. First of all, about 30 to 40% of your syllabus typically will get you 70% of your marks. Now it's important for you to go over your mark schemes, your previous year papers, look at your internal assessments or stuff that your teacher made sure she revised just before the final exams. Look at those important topics and remember they are the ones you must do right up front. The second tip I want to give you here is on keywords. When you're looking at the mark schemes of the past papers, make sure you note down those important keywords and the words your teacher stressed while giving you notes in class. Make sure you write all of them down. Now, question number two on your mind. How do I study everything that there is to study within this limited time? Now, what I suggest is that take your course outline or syllabus and break that down into milestones of 30 days, 45 days, 60 days, whatever time you have left for your exams. Put everything down into an Excel spreadsheet. You could use apps, planners or schedulers. There are plenty of them available these days, but make sure you put down each and every one of those items in your course outline or syllabus onto your planner. So you have a checklist of all the items that you need to study before your exam. And question number three on your mind is where do I study? Now, I recommend that you have a designated study space which has everything that you require. Make sure your study place is clean, free of clutter and also noise free. Make sure it's well ventilated and has natural light. Some people like to study with background music and some people like quieter spaces. But once you have your designated space set, you're going to be super productive every time you go in there. So now let's begin with the timetable. 5.30 a.m. is wake up time. That's what I recommend. If you want to wake up at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m., you can adjust the entire timetable accordingly, but I suggest the earlier, the better. So 5.30 a.m. is wake up time. When you wake up, wash your face, drink a couple of glasses of water, have a fruit or a handful of dry fruits. This will not only give you the nutrients, but also the sugar in the fruit will give your brain a boost of energy before you start your day. Organize yourself and at 6 a.m. you begin your first study session. Take up the most difficult subject or challenging topic first thing in the morning. Mark Twain had once said that you should eat that frog the first thing in the morning and the frog in this case is the most daunting task. This session should last for about two hours, so from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. But remember to take a break in the middle around 7 o'clock where you get up, hydrate and get a breath of fresh air and stretch your legs. Once you've completed this two-hour session, first thing in the morning and attack the most important monster, you're going to feel productive and motivated all through the day. At 8 a.m., wind up your books, keep everything aside and having a clean working space helps to keep your mind calm. Now, this is a one and a half hour break. 
So it's time for you to exercise, eat a healthy breakfast and hydrate. And the healthy breakfast should include protein and complex carbohydrates. A high protein diet first thing in the morning goes a long way in keeping you stress free during these last few days of exam preparation. So keep that muffin away and reach out for the egg whites, curd, milk, oats, sprouts, dahlia or even a nutritious smoothie. At 9.30 a.m. sit down with a timer and take up a mock test or a practice test. Now I've slotted two hours for this activity but you can adjust that depending on the actual length of your own exam. Sit down as you would exactly during an exam and answer the entire paper in one single go. Once you've finished, put your pen down, get up, hydrate, chill and take a healthy snack. At 12.30, sit down with your test and mark it against the mark scheme. Now this is as important as taking up the mock test itself. Marking your test, finding out areas of deficit and noting down the places that you need to revise once again is a winning habit. At 1.30, keep everything aside. I'm feeling hungry because it's lunch time. Now make sure you have a great big healthy lunch and that includes a balance of green vegetables, fibers and proteins. This may be a good time for you to check your phone or social media quickly and also take a 20 minute nap. It's been proven scientifically that taking a short nap in the middle of the day increases the alpha wave production of the brains which causes more productivity and motivation. For more of this, go back and watch our video called 10 Scientific Study Tips to Make You a Better Learner. Now it's wakey wakey time and at 2.30 we need to sit down and study again. Yes, yes, I do realize this is the most unproductive part of the day. So I suggest you take up a different subject. In fact, what I also suggest is that your morning topic, that was session number one, and your second session, which was your paper, the mock paper that you did, should ideally also be two different subjects. And now, you should either take up one of those two subjects or a new subject entirely. Now, sitting down with subject number three at 2.30 p.m., you're gonna feel sleepy. So what I suggest is this is the time for you to study that subject with mind maps, diagrams, flashcards or even online content because you're going to actively interact and engage with the content and you're not going to fall asleep on your books. However, this is the time to be careful of distractions. Make sure you turn off the notifications on your laptop or your mobile before you reach out for that Khan Academy website or any other online interesting content. This session should last for two hours right up to 4.30 p.m. but make sure you take a short 10 minute break around 3.30 get up, stretch your legs and give your eyes a break as well if you've been staring at a screen and get back to your work and finish this entire two hour session at 4.30 p.m. At 4.30, we can take an hour long break. This is the time to maybe call a friend and clarify some doubts. Make sure you have that healthy salad break with some proteins and sprouts thrown in as well. And also chill, rest your legs, stretch them out, hydrate and get a breath of fresh air. The best thing to do actually at this time is to go for a short walk. And if you have a friend in the neighborhood who's studying the same subjects as you, it's a great time to go for that 20 minute walk and clarify some of the doubts that you may have. And come back at 5.30 because we've got the next study session waiting for you. At 5.30, take up a new subject. You could possibly go back to subject number one or two, but don't study subject number three that you did at 2.30, or you want to take up an entirely new subject. Now 5.30 to 7.30 we slotted for you. Once again, break it up in the middle at around 6.30 for a 10 minute break where you hydrate, and at 7.30 you end 
your subject number four or your study session number four. Now 7.30 is a break time and I'm really feeling hungry. This is a good time for you to have dinner and also clear up your clutter on your table and arrange your books. Now for dinner what I recommend is don't go very high on carbs at this time. Instead make it up with a high protein, high fiber and greens thrown in kind of a diet. At 8.30 p.m. is your last study session. Now this one is optional. It depends on you. You know, in this entire timetable, we've covered about 10 hours of study. I know that can be excessive, but I've just made this such that if you need to study for 10 hours, you know how to slot that in. If you don't need to study for 10 hours, you can cut out one part of this session or one part of any other session that you wish to. But in this timetable, at 8.30, you get in for a 45-minute slot with a 15-minute break and then from 9.30 to 10, you continue to study. So this last session that you have, it's important for you to learn that kind of content that needs memorization. Anything that you need to commit to memory and you're finding yourself not being able to do it, pick that up for this last session of the day. Because when you finish learning everything and at 10 p.m. when you finally put your books down, your subconscious mind is going to work on it as you sleep. And when you wake up the next morning, you're going to remember most of the information bright and clear. And at 10 p.m. you need to wind up everything and don't take a long break from there. Don't get onto social media or television. 10 p.m. is not the time to engage in any screen time activity. So wind yourself down, listen to some soft music, turn the lights down in your room and go off to bed. So that way from 10 p.m. to 5.30 a.m. you've got a good seven and a half hours sleep. You've also got a 20 minute nap during the day. We've got our 10 hours of studies which I know could be excessive for some of you but you can modify the timetable to suit your requirements. Make sure you do a lot of healthy eating. You must have your fibers and a high protein diet and make sure your carbs are complex carbs like oats or whole wheat or jowar or bajra or whatever grains you get locally in your area. Make sure they are complex carbs. Eat well, keep your mind peaceful, stress-free and wish you all the best for your exams coming up. I know you're going to rock them and be a superstar. And also don't forget that subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it. And give us a thumbs up if you like this video. And happy watching!